What is a function? Have you ever wondered the answer to that question? What is a function? A function is a relationship. It's a special kind of relationship between the input and the output, or you could say between two sets of numbers. It relates each input to a single output. So here are some examples of functions. F is a function, G is a function of X, and so is H. But most commonly, you'll see f of x as a function. y is equal to f of x. So f of x could be anything. f of x could be 3x plus 5. That's a function. y could be 2x minus 7. That's a linear function. These are all examples of functions. Now going back to this one, x is the input of the function, and y is the output of the function. Now, in order for this to be a function, for every input, there has to be a single output. If you get two outputs for one input, it is not a function, it's a relation. So in order for a relation to be a function, there has to be one output for every input. The input represents the domain of the function, whereas the output represents the range of the function. Now let's talk about how we can make a function table. Let's say y is equal to 2x plus 4. If we plug in 1, or if we replace x with 1, we'll see that y is equal to 6. If we replace x with 2, we get a y value of 8. So for each different x value, we get a different y value. That's an example of a function. When x is 3, y is 10. Now consider these three function tables. Which one is not a function? Take a minute and analyze those three tables. Feel free to pause the video. So looking at the first table, all of the x values are different. So that's going to be a function. Now, you can have the same y value for different x values. That is totally OK. You still have a function here. For the second table, we do have a common x value, but they lead to the same y value, which is OK. For the third table, we have a common x value, but they lead to two different y values. That is not OK. When x is 2, y can't be 7 and 8 at the same time. And it's, it needs to give us just one output, not two different outputs. So if we input 2, we want the function to give us one output. If it gives you two outputs, it is not a function. It's a relation, but it's not a function. Consider these six graphs. Which one represents a function and which one does not represent a function? Go ahead and identify each one as a function and, you know, the ones that are not functions. Feel free to take a minute on this one. So how can we tell if a graph is a function or not? There is something called a vertical line test. So if you draw a vertical line, if it touches the vertical line at one point, it's a function. If it touches it at two or more points, then it is not a function. So A, or the graph that is associated with A, is a function. The graph that is associated with B, that is not a function because it touches the vertical line at two points. So let's put an x for not a function. Now for c, that's a function. It touched it at one point. Graph d does not pass the vertical line test, so that is not a function. If you draw a vertical line anywhere on e, it only touches it at one point, so that's a function. And for f, we can clearly see that it's not a function. At this point, it touched it at three points when we place the vertical line at that location. So f is definitely not a function. By the way, for those of you who want more examples on functions, evaluating functions, dealing with composite functions, and uh, like operations associated with functions, check out the links in the description section below. 
I'm going to be posting more video content there for those of you who need to go uh, deeper into this subject. But now let's talk about the different types of functions that you'll encounter in a typical algebra or even a pre-calculus course. The first one you need to be familiar with is this one. This is a linear function. As you can see, it's a straight line. And the parent graph is y equals x. Now you can have variations of that. For example, y equals 2x is a linear function or y equals 3x plus 7, that's a linear function. x is raised to the first power. The next level is a quadratic function, which looks like a parabola. And the parent function is y is equal to x squared. So you could have y is equal to x squared plus 4, that's a quadratic function or y is equal to 3x squared plus 7, that's quadratic, or y is equal to x squared minus x plus 8, that's a quadratic function too. The leading term is an x squared. You could have a number in front of it, or you may not, but that is an example of a quadratic function. Now, let's look at the next example. This is called a cubic function and the parent graph for that is y is equal to x cubed. Next we have this one. This is y is equal to the square root of x and it's a, a radical function. You can also call it a square root function. And then there's one that starts from the y-axis and becomes horizontal. This is a logarithmic function. And the general form is y is equal to log x. So that function increases at a decreasing rate. And there's another function that increases at an increasing rate. That is called an exponential function. It's increasing at an exponential rate. And this would be like y is equal to e raised to the x. Or you could have another constant like y is equal to 3 raised to the x. e is just a number. It's approximately 2.718. And there's some other numbers that come after that. So that is an example of an exponential function. Next, you have trigonometric functions. And these go on forever in a horizontal direction. So that is an example of y is equal to sine x. So that's a, a trigonometric function. These are periodic functions because they continue forever. They repeat the same pattern. Now we do have some more functions to review. The next one is an absolute value function. I'm sure you've seen this one before. And the graph is where the function is y is equal to the absolute value of x. Next, we have rational functions. This is where the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator. So a good example of a rational function is y is equal to 1 over x. So typically, you'll see a variable. Let me say that again. You'll see a variable on the bottom of the fraction. And then there are polynomial functions. These are functions with many terms. And the shape of a polynomial function can vary. It won't always look like that. But this would be something like y is equal to x to the fourth minus x cubed plus 2x squared minus 7. Now keep in mind that is just an example. This specific equation doesn't represent uh, that particular graph. It's just an example of a, a polynomial function. So those are some different types of functions that you're going to encounter in a typical algebra course. There are some other functions, but we're going to stop it there. Now you need to be able to evaluate functions. For instance, let's say that f of x is x squared plus 4x minus 7. What is the value of f of 3? How would you find the answer to that question? For this, all you need to do is simply plug in the value. It's going to be 3 squared plus 
4 times 3 minus 7. So that's going to be 9 plus 12 minus 7. 12 minus 7 is 5, and 9 plus 5 is 14. So that's the value of f of 3. But sometimes you may have a multivariable function like this one. Let's say that f of x comma y is 2x squared minus y squared plus 3xy. So in that case, what is the value of f comma 2, 3? I mean f 2 comma 3. In this case, just replace x with 2 and replace y with 3. And then you're going to get the answer. So 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. 3 squared is 9. 3 times 2 is 6 times 3, that's 18. 8 minus 9 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 18 is 17. So that's how you can evaluate a multivariable function. So that's it for functions. If you want more examples and other harder problems, check out the links in the description section below.